Hey guys, it's General Heath here. How's everyone doing today? So for today's video, by popular request, we are finally tackling which Halo game has the best needler for our next weapon comparison video. So this has been asked for a while, and the reason why it took a while is because um, the needler is a little more complex of a weapon uh, to analyze and to compare. So there's quite a few things that are involved with comparing this, so that's why it took a little bit longer. But here it finally is. So, just as a reminder, as always, we cannot compare Halo 5 or Halo 2 Anniversary Multiplayer because there are no mod tools that exist yet that let us get the uh, actual stats for these weapons. The point of these videos is to do a pure objective comparison, not an observation-based comparison, but pure objective comparison based on the numbers. So that is what we're going to be using for this comparison for the classic Halo games. So let's get right into it, starting with Halo 1. There's a lot of numbers here this time around. But uh, let's uh, feel free to pause if you need to. So each needle that you fire out has a max range of 20 meters. Needlers are fired at a velocity of 4 meters a second. And the fire rate of the Halo 1 needler starts at 3 meters per second and over time increases to 10, meter, uh, 10 <laughs> needles per second, my bad. Uh, when a needle hits someone, it doesn't do any impact damage to them. But it does explode at the little bit and does 10 points of damage there. And when you... Uh, it takes five to eight needles to super combine and explode. And when it explodes from a super combine, it uh, does 60 points of damage. Now, these next two stats, the magnetism, that determines how uh, the, the lock on, the tracking of the needles. The higher the numbers, the, the better generally. The, uh, the angle at which it can uh, attract, follow an enemy is 12. Its range is 25 and it can hold a max of 20 rounds per clip. So, not bad, right? That's a start, I guess. <laughs> so that's the Halo 1 Needler. Now we're gonna move on to the Halo 2 Needler, which uh, has quite a few aesthetic changes to it. And one of the bigger changes to it is that you can now dual wield <laughs> the Halo 2 Needlers. It's the only Halo game, actually, where you could dual wield Needlers, and it, it, was, it was a pretty good feature, actually, despite the uh, damage reduction when you dual wield. 70% damage reduction, or 30% uh, damage reduction, my bad. But aside from that, let's take a look at the actual stats for each needler. So the max range of each needle is increased a little bit to 24 from 20 in Halo 1. Velocity is also a little faster, 6 meters per second. Uh, the fire rate, it's like right in between uh, Halo 1's minimum maximum with 8 needles per second. It does have impact damage now. Each time it hits an enemy, it does one point of damage, and then when each needle explodes, it does an additional two points of damage. It takes seven needles, approximately seven needles, to super combine, and when it explodes, it does a whopping 400 damage, which is uh, several times higher than Halo 1's super combine. It's basically instant kill when you super combine an enemy, compared to Halo 1. As for the magnetism angle, it's uh, angle of nine, and range of 20, and it could hold a max of 30 rounds. So the magnetism is a little less, so it's a little, it won't track enemies as well as in Halo 1, so it's a little less accurate, but it's not bad. You do get a few other benefits in other areas, such as the really powerful Super Combine. But let's move on to Halo 3 now, which is a game that's very similar to Halo 2 aesthetically, and usually uh, stat-wise, it's pretty close sometimes, uh, but one thing in Halo 3 is that you can no longer dual wield needlers anymore. Like I said, Halo 2 is the only game where you could dual wield needlers. So let's see what the stats are for Halo 3's needlers now. So the max range has increased slightly to 25 instead of the 24 from Halo 2, but still higher than Halo 1, of course. Velocity is a lot faster now, 11 meters per second, has a fire rate of 10 rounds a second and impact damage of 4, which is much higher than Halo 2. However, there's no more detonation damage, meaning when the needles explode in someone, it doesn't do any damage to them. And it takes 7 needles to do a super combine. And that super combine, like Halo 2, also does 400 points of damage. As for the magnetism angle, it's an angle of 6, so it's a little less accurate. Um, it's, the needles are basically able to, uh, to turn less accurately than Halo 2's. And the range... Well, there's two numbers here. At closer range, the um, magnetism has a rating of 10.5, while at longer ranges, it's 21, which is uh, higher than Halo 2, but lower than Halo 1 still. 
and at closer range it's a little less accurate. So it's more accurate at longer ranges, better tracking I should say. Now, next game is Halo 3 ODST. Yes, this time we're actually able to do a full comparison for ODST because the kneeler is actually different in ODST. Uh, a little bit different actually, it's not like a major difference. Appearance wise, it's, it's the exact same as Halo 3's kneeler, uh, but the biggest change is with the specs under the hood. But overall, the specs are also pretty similar. But let's take a look at them anyways. So, starting with the max range, has a max range of 25 meters. Velocity is also uh, 11 meters per second. Has a fire rate of 10 rounds a second. So far, all the same as Halo 3. Impact damage is 3, which is one less than Halo 3's. So it's a little weaker right there already. But same thing, no detonation damage for each needle. It takes 11 needles, however, in ODST to do a super combine on an enemy versus the 7 from Halo 3. So it takes a lot more needles to do a super combine. But when you do a super combine, the uh, damage is still 400. So that's still the same. It just takes a lot longer to do that now. And everything else here is the same. Magnetism angle is also 6. The range at short range, it's rated at 10.5 and goes up to 21 at longer ranges. And the max rounds is also 19 per clip. So, ODSD, it's almost the same, but it's just, it's weaker overall. Um, or at least it has the appearance of being weaker because it takes more rounds to super combine. So after ODST, the next Halo game that came out was Halo Reach. Once again, you still cannot dual wield, but the Halo Reach's needler does come with a... Uh, it's technically an older needler because Halo Reach takes place before Halo 1, but there's a lot of improvements to it actually compared to uh, the even Halo 3's needler. Uh, when you take a look at the specs, it's, gonna, it's, like, it's a lot different, but let's take a look right now. So... Its max range is 26, which is one higher than even Halo 3, which is already one higher than Halo 2. Its velocity is also um, 11 meters per second like Halo 3, but its fire rate is a lot higher, 12 instead of 10 from Halo 3. Its impact damage is also a lot higher, 6 instead of 4. And like Halo 3, it has no detonation damage still. Uh, and its super combined damage is actually a little bit less, 350 instead of the 400 from Halo 3. So it's a little weaker there, 50 points of damage weaker. As for its magnetism angle, though, that's a pretty crazy angle. Uh, it's 16 compared to the 6 from Halo 3 and a 9 and 12 from Halo 2 and 1. So it, it'll track pretty well. And same thing, short range, 13 uh, for the magnetism and then 26 uh, for longer range. So overall, it's its magnetism range is a lot better than even Halo 1, which was 25 at longer ranges. Uh, and of course it holds 19 rounds. Uh, 24 rounds, my bad. So, yeah, it, it's pretty much better than Halo 3 almost all round. <laughs> Actually, yeah, all round it is better than Halo 3. So, after Halo Reach, the last Halo game that we can compare, objectively, is Halo 4. Now, previously, in a lot of cases, Halo 4 has a lot of the same stats as Halo Reach. But let's see that's still the case now. So the max range is actually less than Halo Reach. Instead of 26, it's dropped back down to 25 meters. It's a very small difference, but still, it's a little less than Halo Reach. Fire rate and velocity are both the same, 11 and 12. Impact damage is also the same, also the same six points of damage. Also no detonation damage. Uh, it takes seven shots to super combine, whereas in Halo Reach only took 6, which was uh, less <laughs> than every other Halo game. And its damage is still the same though when you do a super combine, 350 points of damage. And everything else after this point is also the same. Magnetism angle is 16, max the magnetism range is 13 at short range and 26 at longer ranges, and it holds a max round of 22, which is actually 2 less than Halo Reach. So. Yeah, that's the Halo 4's needler, which is uh, close to Halo Reach's, but slightly inferior. So which one is the best? Well, I just threw a lot of numbers at you guys, so I made a little nice chart here for you guys to compare. Feel free to pause and take a look at it for yourself. So personally, I do love Halo 3's the best. That's my personal favorite. But statistically speaking, or stat speaking, uh, objectively speaking, the best needler would have to be Halo Reach's needler. It may not do as much super combined damage as Halo 3 and 2 and ODST, 
but it super combines a lot faster. It only takes six needles to do it, and pretty much every other stat is higher. It's range, uh, it's impact damage, it's magnetism, angle, and range, and it holds more rounds in it too. So overall, the Halo Reach needler is just all around better than Halo 3s, and slightly better than Halo 4s. So. Yeah, with that in mind, I would have to declare Halo Reach's Needler objectively the best Needler in the entire Halo series that we can compare. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how it compares like Halo 5 or Halo 2 Anniversary, because like I said, we can't compare that. Uh, maybe someday when the tools become available, we can try to compare them, but for now, Halo Reach has the best Needler. As for the worst Needler, that would have to be Halo 1's Needler, which is surprising because usually Halo 1's weapon sandbox are all like pretty OP all around compared to the newer Halo games. But the Needler, it's actually the worst. It's super combined as the one hit kill, uh, like in like in the newer games. It actually uh, it takes out most of your shields and health, but you can survive it. Uh, and everything else, it's it's less range, it's slower. I mean, its tracking is pretty accurate, but you know, it doesn't do as much damage, and it holds less rounds for the most part. Uh, so it's Halo One's Needler is not the best, but Halo Reaches is definitely the best. Second best will be Halo Four. Third best will be Halo Three. Fourth best will be Halo Two. Uh, I guess it could almost be a tie between Halo Two and Halo Three ODST. Halo Three ODST, ODST is just meh because of how many shots it takes to super combine. But yeah, that, that's the ordering that I would give it the ranking for each game. But, in the end, Halo Reach is the best. So yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video and found it to be interesting. And if you did, make sure to leave a like and leave your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you want me to compare next. Uh, there's still much to do, so let me know in the comments and I'll definitely, uh, whatever is the most popular, I'll definitely take a look at uh, in the near future. So definitely uh, let me know there and do stay tuned after that. And uh, other than that, if you haven't subscribed already, do make sure you do that. And I will see you all next time. Bye, guys.